to me, it's it's like them going into the Catholic Church or the Protestant Church and cutting their altar. The entire religious community understood if they can do this to Western Presbyterian Church, they can do this to the, the, us at First Baptist or Temple Sinai or any place else. Seventy percent of people don't know who a Sikh is. And I was even told at one time, you know, well, that's what happens when you have the wrong religion. My name is Wilbur Slockish Jr. Chief Johnny Jackson. My name is Rabbi David Goldstein. Scott Greenberg. My name is John Wimberly. My name is Jisjit Singh. I am uh, Chief Klickitat Tribe. I'm the Cascade Chief on the, on the Columbia River. For 15 years I've been involved with chaplaincy for the state of Texas and for the last six years I have been the head consulting rabbi. I'm a former inmate in Texas Department of Criminal Justice. And I'm the former pastor of Western Presbyterian Church. I'm the executive director of the SIC American Legal Defense and Education Fund, SALDEF. This religion of the native people doesn't take place in what looks like a physical building, a church. It is outside. It could be under um, a canopy of old growth trees. It could be in a meadow. One of the most famous passages in scripture is Matthew 25 where uh, one of the lines is, I was hungry and you didn't feed me or I was hungry and you fed me. Sick Americans have been in this country for over a hundred years. Uh, we believe in uh, one God sharing your earnings uh, and earning your livelihood through honest means. Our unique articles of faith, including the turban and beard, represent our commitment to justice, service, equality, and religious freedom. Our program is a rehabilitation program where we use religion as rehabilitation for the inmates by giving them spirituality and giving them hope for the future and giving them like the tools of how to deal with society once they get out. You know, in this country, there's been a history of otherizing. Uh, there's been a history of xenophobia, a fear of what's different and what's not understood. And, uh, you know, in particular, post 9-11, there's, there's really been this uh, racialization of religious identity. So for, for Sikh Americans in particular, the turban and beard, uh, though it represents to us privately uh, compassion, justice, service, many American ideals publicly, they've come to mean very different things. We had a situation in Texas where a sick American man was told by a judge that he would have to remove his turban before he came into his courtroom. That's a very real situation where uh, a sick cannot uh, fully function in society and seek justice under the law when they're not able to wear their articles of faith. The battle was really around their fears of the homeless versus our assurances that we have been feeding these people, we know these people, we consider them to be our friends, and we have a religious commandment that tells us we have to be responsible for them. And so we're not going to drop that responsibility just because we're moving into a new building. The whole world was watching this thing, and you knew that there were other communities out there who were going. If they can shut down Miriam's Kitchen at Western Presbyterian Church, maybe we can shut down that program in our neighborhood that we don't like. The neighbors had already talked to the police chief and said, you know, if they open that and there's not, they don't have legal protection, you have to enforce the law. And, and the chief of police, uh, bless him at the time, said, I don't want to put these people in jail because I think what they're doing is right. He says, but if that's what the law is, my job is to enforce the law and I will arrest them.
They were standing in this burial ground that was now destroyed. No one said a thing. Their silence, that's for me, said everything. It's like um, one of the biggest uh, laws you could ever break is by going and disturbing somebody that's been laid to rest. Because to them, it's just a piece of land with a superstition fallen over, over it. That's the misunderstanding that they look at us with. To me, it's, it's like them going into the Catholic Church or the Protestant Church and cutting their altar. I remember a time when there was no Jewish services. Um, you were just pretty much stuck out. You know, you were the odd man out. Um, one time I was on a unit that had uh, 5,000 people and I was the only practicing Jew. So I, I requested to be transferred to a unit that had Jewish um, services. And, and every time I was met with opposition, and I was even told at one time, you know, well that's what happens when you're the wrong religion. The body is in jail. The soul is not in jail. The soul needs to be healthy and if the soul is healthy, eventually the body can become healthy. And that's why we need to protect their rights. If they're ever going to be rehabilitated, if there's ever going to be a difference, we need to start with their souls. RIFRA means that, uh, you know, myself, my brothers, my sisters, my mom, my dad, we can all participate in American life in the way that, that we had dreamed. Um, and really the way that it's promised as written out in the Constitution. We have an opportunity to get jobs uh, and to fully integrate within American society without having to compromise or sacrifice any part of our religious identity. And he said nobody would uh, expect to control the worship of Western Presbyterian Church in terms of its worship and its sanctuary, and nobody should be able to control its worship in terms of its service of neighbors, in this case, uh, the homeless. If RIFRA did not exist, uh, Miriam's Kitchen would not exist. There's no question about that. And many other ministries would not exist because congregations would be afraid to open them because they would know about our case and knowing about our case they go well it's already been proven that you can't do that that neighbors can come in and tell you what to do so we're not even going to start it the people are still there who passed on in that area they need to be protected. And it's our job as Native people, as long as we stand, we have to protect that. Because one day when we're gone, we're gonna be asked by the Creator, why didn't we do that if we knew and understood it? This matzah has been huh? brought to you by Chabad Outreach Jewish yeah. Inmate Services. <laughs> what the case has accomplished so far is a settlement in which the state has opened at least one kosher kitchen in the state of Texas, and that kosher kitchen has evolved into an enhanced Jewish program, which has provided the needs of the inmates on many different levels, and that has helped them to retransition and to go out into the world and to become members within the community.
and through meeting Rabbi Goldstein and the Jewish Enhanced Program and the Max Masada case, today I'm a better person. Um, through religion, I've been able to rehabilitate myself. I'm very proud to say that. <laughs>